What's up guys, Alex from Retech Reviews here and Happy New Year to you guys. I'm starting off this new year by testing one of my favorite graphics cards from 2016, the RX 480. Now with AMD about to launch Vega, this card is about to go obsolete, but I want to know how it performs in 2017 with the newest games at the best settings. Let's take a look. So we're going to start off by taking a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider on DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. And as you can see at the top, my i7 is clocked at 4.6 GHz and I am running 32 GB of DDR3 memory. At 1080p on DirectX 11, I was averaging 72 FPS with a low FPS of 13. And on DirectX 12, I was averaging 75 FPS with a low of 45. Jumping up to 1440p on DirectX 11, I was averaging 49 frames per second with a low of 12. In DirectX 12, I was averaging 50 FPS with a low of 14. So it looks like in Rise of the Tomb Raider that DirectX 12 is actually helping out the RX 480 gain a higher frame rate than it did in DirectX 11. Alright, and jumping over to The Division, I again tested this game with DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. And at 1080 with DirectX 12, I averaged 66 FPS with a low of 54 and 63 FPS with a low of 50 with DirectX 11. So again, DirectX 12 has a far higher frame rate at 1080. And with 1440, I averaged 46 FPS with DirectX 12 with a low of 38. And with DirectX 11, I averaged 45 FPS with a low of 36. So this is the second game that I tested where DirectX 12 actually had a higher frame rate than DirectX 11, so it looks like it favors AMD a little bit. So taking a look at Far Cry Primal next, I averaged 56 FPS at 1080p with a low of 46, and I averaged 41 FPS with a low of 35 at 1440. And just to point this out, this is only DirectX 11 because there is no DirectX 12 support for Far Cry Primal, at least that I know of. So, However, if you know a way to get DirectX 12 support for Far Cry Primal, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comments down below and I'll, uh, I'll make sure to update this graph and let you guys know. In Rainbow Six Siege, again only DirectX 11, I averaged 84 FPS with 1080 and a low of 75. And with 1440, I averaged 53 FPS with a low of 48. So it seemed to run pretty consistently with not a lot of frame drops. And it ran fairly well. Alright, so taking a look at Grand Theft Auto V, which is still one of the most graphically demanding and beautiful games out right now, even though it's a couple years old. Uh, I ran this game at only DirectX 11. And at 1080p, I averaged 87 FPS with a low of 42 FPS. And jumping up to 1440p, I still averaged 72 FPS with a low of 42. So even with this graphically demanding game, you're still well above the 30 FPS, let alone the 60 FPS mark. So it's still plenty capable of running some of the most beautiful games out right now. And on to the most beautiful and newest game I've tested, Battlefield 1. If you want to check out my review for it, I'll leave the card right here. And so I tested this game at 1080p and 1440p as well. And at 1080p, I averaged 87 FPS and with got a low of 78. And at 1440p, I averaged 65 FPS with a low of 57. So this is a brand, pretty much a brand new game. And it still runs at well over the 65 FPS threshold. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you liked my video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button. Let me a comment down below. Do you have one of these cards? What kind of frame rate do you get? I'd be kind of curious to know. Also, are you excited about Vega? Because I'm super excited about Vega. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, I'll leave the links in the description below to all my social media accounts, my Discord channel, as well as a code so you can join it and chit-chat with me. And a link to the card if you want to buy one of these. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. It's my Amazon affiliate link. It helps out the channel. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.